All right, so we're going to get rolling here. Okay, I'm going to record too. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our mastermind call. And we are excited to talk about lots of topics. I mean, is there is there anything going on in the world right now or or is it just me? It's just you. <laughs> nothing nothing going on in the world. Is it like insane or, or what? I mean, there's just so much uh, happening out there right now. So um, we are, we'll get rolling here. I mean, we've got these topics that we sent out in the email, but we can talk about other things. So I guess I'll start off with, um, you know, if, if you guys who are on already, I know there's still some more joining. If you have some questions um, for, for us tonight, let me know what what's on your mind. I mean, with everything that's going on, I just want to make sure we're we're talking about what you want to talk about. So, anybody got a question right off the bat? Uh, I do. Uh, Paula. Yes. Hi, Doctor Towers. Hello. <laughs> Did you have a question? I heard. I do. Um, I was just wondering how. I just wondered how other people are 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 how, what what kind of resistance that people are running into from from their staff about being vaccinated. Um, mm -hmm. My staff is uh, Patty and I are the only ones that are vaccinated, and, and in fact, I had mine so long ago, you know, um, with the first responders and so forth. I guess in February that. I'm really hoping that they come out with a booster soon because, I mean, mine, mine was pretty long ago. But um, my staff is just um, very, very anti-vaccination. Yeah, and, I can understand um, that. I can understand that. Mm -hmm. and, and, so I, and so I was just wondering, like, what other people are having. I mean, I'm having a little bit of difficulty because, you know, um, one, of my, one of my assistants, dad has covid she doesn't really actually live in the same house with them um she's really young she's like 20 years old she lives in an apartment over the garage mm -hmm. she's symptom free she had a covid test you know she's negative you know yeah. her doctor her doctor said that she could come back you know this was like last friday she could come back you know today tuesday um but nobody here wants her here and it's just you know it's just the thing is i mean they don't wear their masks out in public all the time they don't know who they're around and i don't know it's just it's just um it's just really frustrating i mean i feel like you know we need Lindsay, and you know she's just not here for no real reason that i can understand i mean it's like it's like you know they're afraid they're going to, to, to get it from her, but yet they're, you know, around yeah. other people. They don't know their status, you know, all the time. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I don't know. It's just, it's just yeah. a, a really tough situation for me. It, it is a tough situation for everybody right now. Everybody's going through this. So um, I don't know if uh, I know, there's a few on, some may not be on mute. Who else would like to address this? What are you doing with your team? And well, I mean, some of this is state by state. Who wants to I can say, I can say Maine has just um, mandated healthcare workers to be vaccinated. And you know, I, yeah, I just saw an update about that, Dave. Did you, did you see that update? Today? Um, I did not see today, anything. Just, just tonight, let me read you what it said. Um, it said, um, I have heard that the Board of Dentistry had a non-published, non-announced, no way to observe emergency meeting tonight where they punted the governor's mandate to DHHS to decide. I hope that a meeting in secret did not happen. Does anybody know? Um, yeah. So that's what I just saw a few minutes ago right before I came on. I don't know anything about that, but that really is almost immaterial because the Board of Dental Examiners would consider any breaking of the law to be unprofessional conduct. 
and the law says that we're mandated to have vaccines. So that's, I don't, I don't know that the board has any power in this instance. Yeah, I don't uh, really know. But, um, but I had a meeting with one of my team. I, I'm, I'm hearing your, your concern. It, it's interesting that people are afraid of someone who might be infectious, but they, they don't get the vaccine, which is their number one protection against it. That, that boggles my mind because I have two team members who out of, in, in my case, it's only two out of 29. So that's, I'm in a lot different situation, but they're really key team members. One has been with me 15 years and to lose her would be really, really sad, but I have no choice. Yeah, well, to be honest with you, I wish I had no choice. I wish Alabama would do the same yes. thing and then it would be like, well, it's not me, it's them and you gotta do it. I feel I, I feel that from you. I understand what you're saying with that because we've been talking about it because patients are now calling and they want our team to be vaccinated to feel safe to come in. It's it's a yeah. and, and what I can't understand is you know I, I spent a ton of time researching all this and asking people to send me what are you finding that's telling you not to get vaccinated. And, and I can't get anything from anybody that says not to get vaccinated. It's just, a, I don't want to, I don't think it's safe, but there's no data. When I look at the data, the data is like hugely, I mean, you're, you're hundreds of times more likely to die of COVID than have any problem with the vaccine. It just doesn't make yeah, any I, sense. I, I, I just can't understand, um, you know, like I grew up, you know, in Delaware and we had um, you know, Amish in our community and, and they, they were, you know, anti any kind of vaccine. Like they just, they just wouldn't go for it now, but these same employees, you know, they're vaccinated against, uh, measles, mumps, rubella, uh, chicken pox, all this stuff. I just don't, I just can't understand why they have a problem with this particular vaccine. Um, does, does anyone know? yeah, I know. Um, I mean, it's really hard. I've, I've tried to kind of be unbiased in this in, in data and share data. Um, I think a lot of, of young ladies hesitancy is the information going around about um, miscarriages and sterilization. Uh, for example, my um, close friend who's a nurse at a university hospital um, she's in childbearing age and she has said no way. Um, so that may be, I don't know what their concern is. Um, there's also the vaccine allergic reaction reporting site. I think there's seven of them maybe. Uh, VAERS, V-A-E-R-S, uh, maybe openvares.com if you want to go check there. Yeah, I have looked at that and I've looked at the allergenicity and there's only two, um, there's only two chemicals in the, any of the vaccines that are even remotely allergenic. And yeah. the allergenicity of this vaccine is extremely remote. Yeah. Well, have you been vaccinated? Um, you know, I'm going to plead HIPAA on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I was just wondering, you know, there are reasons that people have not. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. You know, there are religious reading re reasons and different there things. Are. But there, there, are, there are people that are 40 years old now that are dying from this. Yeah. And with no underlying health issues. Yeah with no underlying health issues. And so, you know, I mean, with, with our team is one thing, you know, if you have a number of people there in your team that have not been vaccinated, why is that? What are the patients saying? But also why, why are they resisting the vaccination? Which I'm sure they're good reasons. Uh, but at, at the same time, you know, I've had COVID, I've been, I've been vaccinated, 
And I feel, you know, when I had COVID, it was really easy. So I don't feel like I'm going to have any problem, but damn, I'm going to get a booster when I can for the protection. You know? And it's not because President Biden is telling me. I, I sure ain't going to do what he's telling me these days. <laughs> I never did it yeah. but, I, but I think it's, it's, it's a thing for me personally, for my health, but also for my family. And I think that is what, what is occurring is the people that are unvaccinated are getting in the hospital and it's affecting them, but it's affecting the people around them. And I think that's what we have to look at. It's not just ourselves, but the other people that are affected by us and our health. Good point. Uh, I'm, show, me, I'm, you know, so, I'm, I'm showing sorry. on the screen, I know you can't see this if you're on the phone, but I'm showing the um, CEDAR solutions recommendation on verbal skills to patients. Uh, you know, it's, it's really a HIPAA conversation when patients ask you if your team's been vaccinated. Um, somehow we've lost HIPAA in the process of this. So um, anyway, this article is here if anybody wants it. So go ahead, you, you had another statement question? I had a question. It's yeah. Uh, I I don't know, Patty. Are qu are patients asking if the team has been vaccinated? We have had not a lot. We, we've had a, we we've had a couple. We've had a couple that have asked. But yeah. like I say, there be, besides Patty and I, there are six other people. Is that right? Yeah, six other people besides us. And and none of them have been vaccinated. One of them, one of them is you know a couple of them have yeah the, a couple of them have already had COVID. Yeah. You know they're really young. You know and they they got over it easily. Um, only way you know they knew they had it was loss of smell. You know for a while, but no other sickness or whatever. Um, we're not getting we're not getting like a ton of questions. I don't think. I mean I'm not. I have not been asked once if I've been vaccinated myself. Um, I'll tell them I am. I'm well, I don't, I would tell them if they asked me, but they haven't asked me, but, but what, I, what I'm saying is, uh, so Patty and I are vaccinated. The other six are not, um, you know, they're, they range in that, you know, basically from, I, I don't want to, to, I really, 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 really don't want to. And, um, I, I'm just wondering like what, um, and, you know, unfortunately, it's not mandated here. So, you know, it's still on me. Um, I'm just wondering what people think about that situation, like what the collective thought process would be, if anything, that I should that I should try and do about this situation. Because right now, you know, if um, if, you know, if that one team member were vaccinated, I mean, she could be here right now. But the thing is, they the thing is that they're they don't care about any of that kind of stuff like even if you are vaccinated if you've been around it they don't want you to be here and you know all this kind of stuff it's just um it's just a very weird situation where they don't where they they just don't they they don't really want to follow the cdc guidelines or even or even trust the whole thing that you know if you've been vaccinated that you don't have to quarantine or whatever so anyway, it's just a very weird situation that I'm having a hard time kind of figuring yes, out. Yes, and uh, I what know. I have on the screen right now is adding fuel to the fire that um, as of December 31st, the CDC is, um, is saying no more PCR tests, that they're not accurate and don't distinguish between the flu. So this is adding fuel to the confusion. Um, you know, there's also the cycles they spend the test for. I mean, it's just really, really a nightmare. It's a nightmare. <laughs> um, so some of you can see so, this. I mean, what's what's the conversation about this, guys in your community, um, about the PCR test and the flu? I would say neither one of them are are main, are, are are really topics being talked about. Um, so yesterday I had a doctor text me um, and she said her, this, this was a positive thing, if you ask me, um, just from my perspective, I think it's a positive thing that the team member was showing some symptoms and went to the doctor and was tested for 
RSV, strep, flu, and COVID. So I think I think that's positive. I don't know. What do you guys think about that? I mean, previously we haven't been testing for anything but COVID. What? Thank you. I think a lot of people are just getting generally sick. Maybe still a lot of his friends are sick, but not necessarily with COVID. I think people just get sick. Now. Yeah, distinguish between, um, you know, strep, RSV. Now, my daughter's a pediatrician, and she said RSV is rampant right now. She said she's never seen RSV in the summer, and adults are getting it as well as kids. So, um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, what do y'all, what do y'all think? Um, mm -hmm. if if it's not distinguishing between the flu, which it says right here, um, it it does not it does not detect between the influenza viruses, which is a big criticism of the PCR test, plus the the number of cycles that they run. Um, you know, shouldn't they be testing for these other things? I I thought that was a positive sign that they're going to be testing for more than just the COVID and the RSV, the strep, the flu, you know, whatever. Any opinions, thoughts? I know Dave, your wife's a nurse. What is she saying? She says that everybody that she talks to, that all the people in the hospital are non-vaccinated. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Number two is that it is COVID people of fear and false evidence appearing real, no matter how you call it. It is what the society is is fearing. Yeah. And therefore, flu flu is rarely fatal for healthy people, almost never. Yeah. Um, we go to work with colds all the time. Yeah. These are things that are just part of life. Yeah. COVID different. So yeah. that's why COVID becomes the target. Just like the other one, I would say in that same ballpark is Lyme disease. Lyme disease is affecting people's lives. Yeah. COVID is affecting yeah. people's lives. If there were a vaccine against Lyme disease, I'd take it in a second. Yeah. That, there's, I have a tremendous fear of Lyme disease being from the Northeast where it's prevalent. But um, yeah, yeah but it's, it's too, very prevalent here too in the South. But also in, in all my research, it, it, it just says that the, the vaccine is one of the safest vaccines ever been created and that it does the, the risk benefit ratio is just there's just not I, I, my mind's mathematical and scientific. I think I think part of part of the conversation is about being forced to do something instead of having the choice. Um, I think I think some resistance is about that. Is that what you guys are hearing? It's kind of like, mommy, if you tell me to do it, I ain't gonna do it. <laughs> why, why do you think they don't want to do it, Patty? I just think there's a lot of false information on social media that people are reading. I believe it. It's causing all these false beliefs, and it's creating people. That's that's part of the problem. I think. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing is like I read this or that on Facebook, yeah. but of course I don't get on Facebook, so I don't know. But I mean, uh, that that's that's what I'm hearing is what they read on Facebook. Yeah, I'm I'm that's that's interesting. I don't get on Facebook hardly for I don't post hardly anything anymore just because of all the censorship and you don't know what's true and what's not true and and they pretty much block uh, a lot of COVID information. So. I don't know. I don't know what. Hey, Barb. Um, so it's it's not an easy situation at all. I think, like you said, I think the main the main thing is. I mean, I'm not anti-vax at all. Um, I think a lot of people do not want to be forced to have to do something. I mean, <laughs> um, this may not be a good example, but you've probably heard the "My Body, My Choice" slogan. Yeah. And what that, what that goes the What's the happening? Cartoon, did you see the other cartoon on that? No. Your body, my choice. Meaning, meaning, my choice is not to vaccinate, so I'm going to infect you. Oh, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> uh. Yeah. 
So um, that is that is a big part of the conversation. I just don't know, guys. I don't know what to tell you. Dr. Paz, do you have anything you want to share on this? Or you want to stay not, out of it? Not at this time. Stay out of it. <laughs> I hear you. Anybody else want to share? We can move on to another topic. Good question. Good question. Thank you for asking. And it is on top of everybody's mind right now. Well, I think I think the, the biggest issue is not with us personally, but what do you do with your team when when you feel like they should be vaccinated and there's resistance? Now, I do not have to be concerned about that now. Yeah. Uh, because I'm I'm not in the office. But I think, I, I think when I if I were in the office and leading the office, that would be one of the things. Okay, I'm vaccinated. I feel like you should be. What is your resistance to it? And how and how do we handle that? Uh, so um, not an easy thing. Well, you know, it isn't an easy thing, Andy. And one thing I read from the HR company was if you choose to mandate that for your team, um, just protect just be prepared for liability if something happened yeah it's interesting. Yes. yes if something happened and yeah patty i hear you i hear you um so you have to be prepared for that liability if you mandated it for your employees um apart from a national mandate or some other mandate and, and now when like Dave in Maine and they mandate it, I, I don't know exactly what your liability would be. Maybe none if it's coming down from the government. I, I don't really don't know. Do you know, Dave? Yeah, I, I think that I have no choice because I would lose my license if I did, if I keep them on. So yeah. because I can break the law. But um, so that may be a different situation. But when if you're in a state that it's not mandated and you're mandating it, I believe that's a different liability. It could be. No, of course, Facebook's done it. Google's done it. Um, Microsoft has done it. So uh, that's actually, interestingly, one of the articles I read just last night um, from University of Alabama talked about how that's one of the signs that, it, that the vaccine is safe is that the lawyers aren't, uh, the vultures aren't circling around the vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny, <laughs> yeah. but the challenge is, you know, it's really sad because I have a, you know, 15 year employee and, and a new employee who's just a superstar and to lose those two employees is, is just killing me. It's and, really and sad. I love them both. And I really care about them both. Um, you know, yeah. I want them, I want them to be vaccinated for their own safety, but uh, it also just makes me feel really sad. It is, it is extremely sad. This is, this is like the most horrible decision that you have to make um, as a team member and as a doctor. I mean, I just, I just wouldn't want to be in that spot. It's just really not a good place to be. And I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I wish, I wish this would all just be over. I'm so tired of it. Aren't you? <laughs> good luck. Yeah. Um, I'm just, I'm just ready to move on with life, you know. <laughs> just like Afghanistan. Oh, yeah. Oh my. <laughs> what a what a mess! <laughs> what a mess we're in. What a smell of a hess we're in. <laughs> yeah. But then, yeah. But, but then you look at Haiti with the earthquakes. And the tropical storms. Yeah. We're a heck of a lot better off. Than oh, we are. I mean, really, we yeah. we are blessed. We are blessed. Okay. So, um, anybody else have a question, or we can go to some of our topics. I'd like for you. To okay. To All right. So let's go to um, your just quick reminder on fall hygiene schedule. That COVID bubble seems to follow us. For some of you, you've already conquered it. Uh, for for some of you, you really have to watch again this fall for that, um, you know, the March 2020 translated to October 
2020 translated to uh, March 2021 and April, and now it's translating to uh, October in 2021. So make sure you look ahead at your hygiene schedules and make sure you don't have that bubble showing up again. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yes. For some of you, it's not a problem. And like I said, some have overcome with new patients or they've really worked their database and they're filling that time. Um, I want to show you a funny picture. Uh, who's, who's been hiring? Anybody hmm. been hiring? Yeah. If you're not hiring, you're blessed. <laughs> uh, so I, I came across this picture today and I thought it was just so funny. Now, now hiring people that show up. <laughs> yeah. Who's, I know somebody on this call who hired somebody that didn't show up. Supposedly this is in the Denver area, but who knows really where that came from. Uh, but, you know, we have this ghosting phenomenon. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, we had that happen to us. <laughs> we offered a job to somebody and she didn't show up. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's really crazy right now. I'm, I'm seeing several doctors being kind of held over the barrel of, you know, I, uh, this office down the street. I wasn't looking, and this office down the street offered me $5 more an hour than what you're paying me. Uh, I'm seeing that. I'm hearing that from several teams. Um, so... We're, we're seeing the hiring market just really um, go crazy right now, as we've talked about before. Then you've got your Walmarts and your uh, Dunkin' Donuts starting them out at $17 and $20 an hour. And and uh, so it's, it's not fun. Anybody else have anything they wanna share on the hiring market right now? All the more reason to do your compensation worksheet with your teams. Does everybody know what I'm talking about when I say compensation? Yes. Worksheet. Yeah. Are you doing that? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. Um, let me pull one up just to kind of show you what I'm talking about. So this is something you want to do with your team at least once a year. And if you hire someone new, it looks like this. So it's the total package of what you're offering them, not just the hourly rate. You just can't go by the hourly rate. You've got to show them the total package. And they have no idea what their total package is. And so when they go comparing, well, somebody's going to pay me a dollar more or five dollars more or whatever, are they really comparing apples to apples? Right? Okay. So don't get held over the barrel by it. And, you know, a lot of doctors are feeling like, oh my gosh, I have to give it to them because I don't want to lose them. It's it's really a challenging, challenging situation. Any Anybody else have anything you want to share about that? Paula, I don't know that this is a new phenomenon. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no, I, it's I, not. I was in practice for 45 years and it's uh, there's always someone that wants to, quote, pay more. And, uh, <laughs> Or, some, or an employee that comes in and you hire and uh, I want to go to nursing school or oh, I always wanted to be an orthodontic assistant so I'm going to the orthodontist. So the main thing is, is if, if you don't mind my sharing, the main thing is taking care of them and know that they're appreciated. Yes. What, what, is, what is the number one thing that employees look for? Appreciation. Appreciation. Yeah. The money is, is down the list. Preach it. So if we're not, if we're not taking care of the employees and not appreciating them and not telling them, thank you, they're going to go somewhere that will, so whether it's a dollar or $2 difference. You are so right about that. It, it really is, um, the team loyalty survey, which we've, we've talked about several times in different programs is, you know, the number one thing they want is appreciation and respect. Then they want to have fun during the day, not just events after work, but they want to have fun during the day and they want to be challenged and they want to be paid. So when money comes to number one, that means appreciation, respect, fun and challenge are maybe missing. Yeah. 
big time. Yeah. And uh, so this has been around a long time. What I'm seeing that's different right now is that instead of them saying the office down the street offered me a dollar or two more, they're offering five dollars more. And it's really messing with overhead, it's messing with overhead big time. Yeah. So that's why we're talking about raising fees. You got to you got to consider raising fees, looking at your fees, even if you raise them in January. I mean, inflation. Oh, my gosh. Um, Eric had a great graph the other day. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, it was um, inflation calculator. So let me show you this. Here's here's where we are. And, you know, you may want to take a screenshot of this and just share it with your team. <laughs> this is United States annual inflation rates 2011 to 2021. And he got this from inflationcalculator.com or something like that. Look at where we are. <clears throat> this is where we are right now, 5.4%. Most of the time when we raise our fees, we raise them one to 3%, right? Mm. And that's not gonna cut it um, in this market. And the the other point is, is if you're on a lot of, of PPO plans, you can raise your fees all day and it's not going to matter, right? <laughs> um, anybody anybody have any thoughts about what you're doing with your, your fees right now or inflation? Yeah, any? We raised our fees and we're reviewing them again. Good. Good idea. So mm -hmm. anybody, anybody else doing that? Yeah, we've yeah, done we're doing that. Good, Dr. Bulsara. Mm -hmm. Dave? Yeah, we we were originally going to raise them 3% and we changed to 5 Okay, good deal. All right. I know some, some of you can't be talking, but it, it is really important thing to do right now with um, the current market. So I'm glad we're looking at that. Um, let me show you something else that just came across my desk today. And that's about changes, uh, changes in insurance plans for 2022. So this was uh, pretty interesting. And uh, Dave, on the Zoom camp we had with the admin teams last week, we shared a lot about, uh, we didn't have this information at the time, but we did share about the first part with uh, the fees reduction from some of the insurance companies. And we did talk a lot about membership plans and advantage. And I mean, if there's ever a time to do it, it is now. Wouldn't you say, Dave? Absolutely. Oh, it's always the time to do it. <laughs> it. It is, absolutely. And I think on the Zoom camp, I know we were gonna talk about some of the highlights from that. One of the highlights that came out of that is that maybe a lot of people have a membership plan. They're not, they're not really signing people up on it and they're still doing the annual fee instead of a monthly fee. And you're not gonna get quite the um, participation, uh, for, especially from new patients from the annual fee. Is that right, Dave? Yes, the, the, the real advantage of the monthly fee is just the automatic rollover. Plus if you raise your fees, it's no big deal to raise it a buck 50. Yeah. But if you raise it $18, they, they notice it more. That's exactly right. Yeah, for sure. And they're paying that big fee every other time they come in. So having the, um, having the monthly fee is, is much more palatable, especially for a new patient coming in where you can have, um, don't you charge a registration fee, Dave? There is. It's $55 for an individual and $95 for a family. And okay. interestingly, I fought it at the beginning. I didn't put it in my plan when we were when we were working this all out with yeah. Ted and Dan, and they did, and they they convinced me that it was better that way. And I put it in, and it didn't stop anybody from signing up. Gotcha. It, it was really good. It really doesn't. I mean, it, it's it's much better to have the registration fee of a hundred bucks or. 150 or something like that, then charging them three or $400, which would be a, a full fee for a new patient visit. Right. right? Yes. 
Absolutely. And if they're an existing patient, you could kind of waive that registration fee. I mean, if they're checking out today from their hygiene visit and they're going to sign up now and you're going to start their monthly payment for the next six months till they come back in, that's going to be fully paid for by the time they come back in. So there's no loss if they were to cancel their card or whatever, right? That, yes, almost always uh, when they sign up, it's because they're here and they're going to get a benefit and that's why they don't mind paying that extra fee. There you go. Okay, for so sure. It, it just works. And it, and it also means that they're making a commitment. Yeah. Yeah, they are. They are. And that, that works. And I'm a member at the dentist where I go. So, you know, yeah. I do it myself. I'm not just saying, talking about this. I, I am actually doing it myself. So let's look at what I've got on the screen here. If anybody's in network with Cigna, you may have received a letter that they're cutting their fees 30%. And, um, you know, they're, they're offering you, I think, maybe a check for $2,700 if you will accept their new fee schedule. That's, yeah, that's sweet. I don't think that's going to cover the fee loss. <laughs> I see that head shaking. Um, Robert, hey, as long as you don't treat the patients. <laughs> exactly. $2,700 for not treating them. Yeah, if you don't take any more, uh, you stay on contract, but just don't accept any more significations. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, so here's a couple other things that are coming down the pike for filing insurance: temporary, <clears throat> temporary partial dentures, temporary complete dentures, or fixed bridges are all considered part of the overall treatment. This means you'll get paid for a temp, temporary or permanent prosthetic, but not both. So how many of you file insurance claim for your temporary denture? And also at a 30% reduction of what they used to pay. Oh yeah. Well, if you're on Cigna, yeah. And I mean, there's some other plans that are probably lowering their fees too, but this is, this is for overall uh, insurance filing from the way I understand this. Okay. See, I, as I peruse various contract offerings for next year, I'm seeing more clauses that will surprise most people. I know your first thought was, her Friday nights must be wild. <laughs> She's being funny. I don't think I'd argue with that, but here's some examples you may or may not have seen. So when you guys do a temporary denture, do you charge for that or do you wrap it all in the, the case fee? We usually charge for it. But we don't we don't submit a claim for it. Okay. All we, right. do the, we do yep. the same. Okay. Okay. All right. Fixed bridges. So any temporary anything. Most people don't charge for a temporary. Or is anybody charging for a temporary bridge? No. No. Okay. Uh, yes, if the patient's going to be going through implants and we're putting a bridge on that's going to stay on there for a year. Okay. Then, then we charge for it. Okay, that makes sense. Then we don't submit it. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. Now here's another one. Payment for periapical. Dave, can you see the screen? <laughs> I'm on a phone. It's hard to see. Yeah, that's okay. That's all right. I was just wondering. Uh, payment for periapical radiograph images other than as part of a complete series is limited to four within a 12 month period, except when done in conjunction with emergency services and submitted by report. I'm definitely seeing an end to periapical radiographs being reimbursed without frequency limitations. So this has been um, something that we do to add some production for hygiene, add some value to hygiene. Um, has anybody been doing the four bite wings and two or three PAs? We do. We, we alternate the PAs with the bite wings. Okay. So you're going to see, I mean, some people do that, um, you know, once or twice a year. I don't know. So it looks like we, we may, and this is not every single plan, but they are going to start limiting how many PAs that we can take? And for people who use the PAs in hygiene um, and do like seven, 
uh, x-rays, then that may throw a kink in their plans. I'm not sure. Um, anybody seeing this already with insurance companies? Patty? Are you seeing yeah. a reduction fee from on our reduction in the number of x-rays that we can take? Just the limit. They're limiting. Okay. So we can go on to the next one. I've seen more plans covering the CARES risk assessment codes. This is great news because uh, many, if not most providers are not charging for this. So who's charging for CARES risk ass assessment? Maybe like Diagnodent? We have not. Okay. So you might give it a shot, file it. Anybody getting reimbursement for Carries risk assessment codes? Okay. So this may be something that you want to um, check into, give it a trial run, see what's happening. Um, so that's something new. Posterior composites are being covered at a lower rate than anterior ones. For example, number 11 will be covered at 80%, but number 14 will be paid at 65 no posterior composite downgrade applies. You'll need to pay attention to how your computer estimates these costs. Actually like this, the patient can see that the bigger fillings are covered at a smaller percentage. Yeah, that's backwards, isn't it? Yeah. Way backwards. So that may be something to keep an eye on. Also, one thing that helped me as a team member is warning the patient about this before they got their EOB. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So this follows that principle of under promise over deliver. So you can tell them, you know, in, in some of the manuals that you have for me that have been in the programs, there's a page maybe in the eighties or somewhere it's uh, insurance changes, insurance, we're issuing an insurance watch so these are some things to add to the list. When you're sharing with your patients, you know, insurance, insurance contracts are changing. The premiums are going up and the benefits are, are being downgraded. So your mm -hmm. premiums being upgraded, your benefits are being downgraded. How do you feel about that? <laughs> Good conversation for your team to have with them. Your hygienist can start uh, having these conversations while they're uh, in the middle of the profi and the patient can't talk. <laughs> Say we're seeing some big changes with insurance in 2022. And here's a couple of them. So, uh, huh? This used to be that we are not going to pay for the fee that you will get paid for a posterior composite is the same fee for an amalgam. Yes. The okay. least expensive <laughs> alternative treatment. That's the leak uh, loss. That's little change in paradigm now they're not mentioning them out but anyway yeah leet the leat the least expensive alternative treatment yeah. that's what they used to always get on their bottom of their uh, eob if we did a composite filling they would get that down there um, and the patients would always call and say the insurance claim the insurance company denied my claim i'm like no they didn't deny it what they did was they changed the code we're not allowed to do that. Yeah. We are required by law to file what we did. But the insurance company looked at it and went, oh, wait, we don't want to pay that. So we're going to lower uh, that fee to a cheaper code. And we're going to pay that as if it were an amalgam, which we did not do. You see my point? How come we can't change codes, but they can? <laughs> <laughs> Who do you want to be your dentist? Us or the insurance company, you know? I mean, <laughs> y'all get where I'm coming from? These are verbal skills for your admin team. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, I have a question that's not yeah. so much um, along these lines and I might just throw it out there. You can talk sure. about it later. Um, but I, I've had, um, I had an oral surgeon call our office um, to ask why our referrals have gone down so much. 
And my office manager was just replying that, oh, you know, we had a transition in our office and Dr. Pulsara has been doing a lot of the surgeries. And um, he kind of like, you know, she, he asked if they, he wanted to, she want, he wanted to speak to me, but then he said, no, he just wanted to hear, you know, talk to them, feel it out first. And then I think he's coming to, to our office next week. And, um, I just wanted to throw out there, like, how should I have this conversation? Cause now that I think about it, I haven't referred anything out of my office. I've been doing all the molar endo, second molar endo extractions, wisdom teeth. I mean, I've been doing everything. And I think the people that referrals have, I think the, the specialists are probably wondering where these patients have gone. What's up? And so I don't know if there's any, uh, you know, what, if there's any uh, advice on how I should talk to them and kind of like tell them, because I'm sure that they feel, you know, I don't know, should I be throwing them a bone every now and then? Because I try to, I try to give my patients the option, but when they say they want to do it here, they, you know, I offer the service. So it yeah. ends up getting done. Yeah. All right. Who's got an answer for that? That's a really good one. Thank you. Uh, I've had that in the past. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you kind of had that with your transition too, didn't you, Dr. Allgood? Yeah, except I went the other way. Oh. You know, uh, I was doing a lot of endo extractions, that sort of thing, not any implants and all, but, but I decided I was going to the more productive procedures that I felt more comfortable with. Uh, but but with this, number one, if you feel comfortable doing what you're doing and you feel very competent and uh, that your level of treatment is as good as those that you would refer to, then there's no reason not to do it yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the key. Don't do it. Don't do it for a financial reason, but do it for the reason that you feel like, feel like that you're taking the best care of your patients. And you mm -hmm. yeah. tell, the, tell the surgeon that or the root canal guy said, you know what? I've had, the, I've had extensive training in this and I appreciate your help. And I would love when I come upon something that I don't feel like I can handle properly. I would love to be with you and talk with you about it. Uh, that's yeah. Right. Just let them know, Hey, you know what? Yeah, I can do this. And I know that Dr. Watson is a fantastic dentist. Uh, at times he was more interested in getting on his motorcycle than in doing the <laughs> canals. But, uh, but I love doing these and I feel like I'm giving great care for the patients. Yeah, that's, uh, it's not, well, I need it because I'm needing to pay Dr. Wesson for all of this expensive practice I bought. <laughs> you know, the, the yeah, I think that's exactly how I feel. And um, that's probably exactly how I should just convey it when they, when they come. Yeah. I think I think that's absolutely advice is right on the money and just just tell them that you do what you feel that you can do well and that there are going to be limits to what you can do and when you find those limits you would love to have mm -hmm. them work with you yeah yeah I like that that's a, but don't, but that's don't a good way to put it <clears throat> it's um, very difficult to counterdict confidence <laughs> yeah but yeah. at the same time, they, they, they're they coming to you because they may be concerned about their pocketbook. <laughs> All right? Yeah. Oh, I'm not uh -huh. getting these referrals now. Uh, there goes my houseboat, and I can't go to the uh, Cherokee Casino next weekend. Oh, darn. <laughs> there you go. Well, you go. I think part of growing my practice, like part of growing the practice here was being able to provide treatments um, that were being referred that I do feel comfortable doing. And the patients have um, expressed like gratitude and not having to go and, you know, yeah. travel to get these treatments done. And um, I think that as our practice go grows being in a more rural area, it probably has affected these other practices pretty significantly because I mean, we see most of the people in, you know, North Georgia, Western North Carolina in our area and so if they're, you know, they may have lost a, a good number of, of those, you know, patients that typically would have come from our practice. Absolutely. You know, one thing that might be a good, good way to kind of shift the attention off of you, if he comes over yeah. is to say, um, what would you like to share with me? What 
new things, what new techniques you're using in your practice. I'd love to hear about what you're doing and mm -hmm. um, the uniqueness that you bring to the area. And uh, because one of the things I, I talk to a specialist about when I'm coaching them is, is going to the generalist and sharing with them your expertise and maybe some difficult cases that you've done and how they handle that so that if you ever come across a difficult case like that, you would know, hey, I, I've seen a case that this doctor did and he's really good at that. So yeah. I, would, I would want, if I were coaching the oral surgeon, I would have him come to you with, let me share with you some cases that I've done. And if you ever come across some of these situations, here's how I handle it. Yeah, um, I think that that's probably a good way to put it because there's definitely cases that come to my office and yeah. they probably need my help in, I'm going to say selling the dentistry, but it's really, you know, they probably need my help in having this patient explore the option of that more complex. Because when I see it, if I can't offer it, then at least I can, you know, still bring it up and potentially send it their way to do stuff that I haven't yet gotten the training yeah, to do. For sure. And yeah. it, it may be at some point like, uh, Dr. Watson did, you may get to the place where, you know what, I'm doing all these full mouth cases and I'm really not interested in doing a lot of extractions anymore or wisdom teeth or whatever. And maybe mm -hmm. I am ready to refer some things out. Um, so yeah. then you have burnt that bridge, you know, with that doctor in the area. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good way to put it because I do want to have, I do have patients who come in and, you know, would probably like all on X's or, you know, more of the um, advanced surgical procedures, which um, I can include in my treatment plan. And then if they show interest. Yeah. Well, what, what, I think he's I think you froze there, doctor. Probably from some of this. But what, yeah. one of the main things that I found over the years, there's a reason the specialist comes to visit you. It's yeah. not to help you with cases, but it's to help you give him referrals yeah, <laughs> and then you can help him but it but it but it's more a marketing deal it's uh they, yeah. they, mar they come to you to market their practice and yeah that's, and that's a great thing there's nothing wrong with that but he's, he's mm -hmm. not coming to question what you're doing <laughs> he's coming to ask you hey send me more pieces yeah you. of course and you can't well, that's, that. that's good that makes me feel a little better because i felt like man you know, is he coming to see, like, am I really doing all this stuff? <laughs> no. Probably, like. <laughs> no. He, he's coming to tell you, hey, quit, because I'm not doing as much as I was doing. You know, <laughs> I'm on this PPO, and I and I cut my teeth 30% with Sigma. Now i got to see more patients. <laughs> got to see 10 more patients every hour. That, that's huh? so true. That's so true. The, you know, the other thing is, to his credit, I don't know this person, but. If, if I saw a significant drop in referrals from someone, I'd want to know if there was something I had done to yeah. um, disturb the relationship. Maybe I'd insulted them in some way, or, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, all I mean, in all, I think they're good. Uh, uh, when, when you're new, the, the, the specialist is going to want to come see you. And, yeah. and they should, they should be calling on you and wanting to have lunch with you or bringing you lunch and meeting you and wanting to, to let you know that they're there if you need them and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. so, but just to call and say, okay. hey, how come we're not getting any referrals from you guys anymore? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, like I have no interest in coming over and, and except for the fact that you're not referring anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a little red flag right there but yeah. that's a very yeah, good but Be becky felt becky who our office assistant felt very proud to say that th we were able to um you know offer these services and she even even though it was an oral surgeon who called she even included endo because she didn't want him to feel like he was the only one. Oh, that was so smart. he said that like you know he's been doing a lot of molar endos and and things that we you know typically um, you know, we're referring, you know, so, to kind of like make, you know, to kind of make him feel like it wasn't just him, you know, yeah. which I thought that was. That was very smart. She's very wise. 
I wonder when the last time was this oral surgeon came over to your practice? <laughs> so it's actually a father-son practice. And the son had visited us back in, I think, November when I first joined the practice. Okay. And um, he seemed very nice. He sent us, like, popcorn for uh, uh, Christmas and stuff. Yeah. Father's actually coming. Um, so. Good deal. Good deal. Yeah. All right. Very good question. Thanks for the wisdom that you guys shared. That's what this is all about. The mastermind. Anybody else have a quick question before we, before we go? Dr. Paz, anything you want to ask? No, off the top of my head. Okay. All right. Well, I will say we had a great zoom camp with the admin team and, um, I took eight pages of notes last Friday on our second part two. We did two separate days this time instead of two together. And I think they like that. I think we're gonna do that again because it gives them a few weeks to implement a few things and come back with questions or success stories. That, that seemed to work well and give less information at one time so that it can kind of gel. And um, they really enjoyed um, some of the uh, conversation that we had, the ideas shared, they loved hearing about other offices and what they're doing and that they're not the only ones struggling with certain things. So that was, that was fun. So I think Eric and I talked and we're gonna be doing um, another one probably in January, February. We'll do a Friday in January and a Friday in February, probably for the whole team and maybe do it as a kickoff for the year and help you with some goal setting or annual conversation, something like that. So we're, we're excited to continue doing those. The, um, the Zoom camp has been, even though it's not in person, which is fun and we really enjoy doing that, we're, we're able to get people like from Alaska, we had Alaska in the room and we had Florida in the room. So we, we had a, a nice cross country mix and it's hard to do that if you're traveling. So anyway. All right, it's bedtime, isn't it? <laughs> uh, not really. <laughs> for some of us. All right, you can stay up late these days, huh? It's party time, yeah, it's party, party time. time. <laughs> okay. Well, I have a 7 a.m. in the morning, so I'm <laughs> I'm gonna head out. How about how about you guys? <laughs> yeah. oh, did it, did anything ever happen about the mastermind meeting in October or any time? Thing like everything that. was full everything was full so Good. no we're not we're not gonna we're you know we're still working on something like that and um and i've got a couple ideas up my sleeve and uh we're gonna we're gonna keep talking about it okay. so okay all right. all right all right everybody thanks for joining us thank you paula thank you Good night. Good night. Thank, thank you thank you paula good night all everybody. right good night everybody great questions right. good discussion all right. Take care. Thanks for all Bye. your wisdom. <laughs> Good night. Good night. I'm not off this thing. I don't know how to get out of it. I got to get out of it. I don't know how to get myself out of it. Interesting. Um, disconnect.